All right, welcome back to the Grand Solar Minimum channel. Today is January 11th, 2018. We have lots to go through, so I'll go ahead and get started here with space weather. Take a look at this, guys. Some magnetic plasma loops forming. Look at the strength. I caught this earlier today and haven't had a lot of time to look at the SDO or anything, but I just thought this was a remarkable capture here. And just, wow, lots of activity. Just wanted to share that with everyone today. It's been a very active day as well. Yep. One more time, and we'll go it's ahead and get started with the news. Jake, mm. I don't think it, it's because you have a different. It's you put it in a different window when you went full screen. So if you'd like me to fix that, you can have people have a look at it here. I would like that. Go ahead and um, we'll just zoom that bad boy in like that, shall we? And they can have a look see loo at it. There you go. All right, you have to fix that back, I guess. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. Cool. So anyway, it's just taking a look at the uh, motion here right before the calibration. Uh, pretty amazing sight to see here. One more time. Whoosh. Lots of lots of activity, lots of dancing going on there. Of course, here's a couple other angstroms as well. You don't see it as well. Uh, I think you do a little bit here in the 193 in the 11 o'clock position, but it's not as clear as it is obviously on the 304 angstrom. You could see it a little bit. Wow. Other than that, our star is pretty quiet. Uh, I know solar wind speeds are go ahead and switch that. I know our solar wind speeds last it checked was at 357 kilometers per second. Um, density is pretty low right now in the low threes so uh, no major coronal holes to uh, worry about this time there is one in the equatorial region slightly above north so if anything it'll brush our magnetosphere maybe a slight uptick in the mid 400s on the winds still watching a little bit of activity here in the far eastern limb of the Sun I'd like to keep my eyes on that region um, Current look at our Alaska as of 111, 1706. That's UCT time. UTC. UTC. Say that five times. Looking at our KP indices, we've been low for the several days now, nothing above a two. And again, the night, I believe we're at a zero right now. Lone sunspot AR2694 still poses no threat for any solar flares whatsoever. Sunspot number 11. And again, taking a look at the planetary alignment. Talked a lot about that. Right now, Earth appears to be on its own on the weak side of the sun's magnetic field. So eyes open. So you'll be watching for any kind of seismic activity, volcanic activity. Uh, it's the unknown. Going to hop over to our GFS models. As you all know, we have a big winter storm uh, racing across the United States right now as we speak. Now, I want to talk a little bit about uh, where I live just because we're seeing just about a little bit of everything right now. The temperature is topped out today at 62 degrees. And I know in parts of Louisville, Kentucky, they made it to 66. Uh, I have family near Cincinnati. They were in the mid-60s as well. And then we have this to deal with. Now, some areas are going to be as low as 30 to 40 degrees from what their current tips are this time tomorrow. And looking at the GFS, here's a storm right now. We see all the heavy rain. And I can tell you with the melt here in western New York from about a foot on the ground, uh, we are definitely flooding and this rain all night is not helping. And you guys can see the heavy snow right behind the icing and freezing rain line, which is very narrow. A lot of meteorologists are concerned about the uh, Midwest region of Indiana, Western Kentucky, Western Tennessee, and uh, parts of Illinois. They're worried that there could be some power outages in that region. And we scooted on a little bit further down the road into Friday afternoon. The freezing rain line is very fast up in the northeast so the transition will be very short from freezing rain to snow and from then on it'll be heavy snow uh, throughout the 
evening Friday night into early Saturday morning and by mid morning Saturday this bad boy will be raced off now I want to show you something else too. fast forward here later into the week early next week as Monday we get a little clipper system of snow in the Northeast as you see but watch as we almost get a repeat of this weekend storm right here and we're looking at the 19th which is next Friday here's another system that's got rain in the south, snow in the north. Watch what happens here as we move into Saturday. Rain, and then almost like the previous setup, there's your ice and snow line by Monday, the 22nd. Look at all the heavy snow in Ohio. The Great Lakes right there. And this thing, by the time it gets to western New York, so another thaw is coming next week and some rain as well. But by Tuesday, Western New York, Western PA, Ohio, Kentucky, you guys are going to get more of the same. So it looks like two weeks in a row, we could see similar storms. And even the models here on Friday, January 26th, suggest a similar setup once again of snow and rain on that same exact area as it changes back to cold weather. So <clears throat> the next couple of weeks are going to be interesting to watch. We're going to see uh arctic blast and then a mild 35 40 degree and then another arctic blast and then another slight mild and then another arctic blast and in between these uh, we're going to see it right now the gfs models are forecasting uh this storm this weekend another storm by next friday and then a storm coming in that following friday and really the first two have the exact same setup with the rapid freeze and the, the freezing rain and sleet line as big as it is. There's the second storm right there. So that's almost a repeat of the first. In fact, that snow looks heavier in the northeast and western New York. So um, interesting week in weather for the United States. Speaking of weather, I wanted to talk really fast. Uh, mention here, heavy snowfall affects 2.3 million people, kills 21, destroys 700 homes in China. I'm probably going to do another special video about this, too, like in Man. Japan. Two rounds of very heavy snowfall hit China's eastern and central regions on January 2nd, 2018. Uh, like we mentioned before, 21 people were killed and millions affected as of January 8th. Uh, heavy snowfall infecting those regions destroyed over 700 houses and nearly 2,800 China's Ministry of Civil Affairs. China's ministry. Okay. Damaged. Okay, I see what that says. 2,800. I'm sorry. 2,800 houses were damaged and 700 were destroyed. I read that wrong. I do apologize. Here's a little video here. I invite you guys to check out. Mari did a uh, quick little update about what was the Japan storm? Southwestern Japan uh, had a snowstorm, pretty rare. I put together some footage that I found online about that. I'll probably do one on this because it's interesting to see what uh, people are sharing on social media. I like doing these little photo montages worldwide. So I'll probably do one on China and a few of the other places too within the next day or so. We'll see. Good stuff. Keep those videos coming. Um, the direct economic loss since January 2nd is $854 million. Uh, that's a lot of money since January 8th and this was have yeah this was as of January 8th they went back to January so, so six days they've lost 800 almost a billion dollars in crop loss uh, economic and crop loss so uh, very unfortunate situation here's a, a little overview of the Japan storm that Mari has covered a rare snowstorm that's affecting people over there uh, nine people have been uh, injured, so thankfully no fatalities out of that. But heavy snowfall, icy road conditions. The big news from this is there's over 400 people trapped on a train. That was breaking uh, as well. Right now. Um, so I'm keeping my eye on that. I have uh, put the link on the, the Japan video that we just recently posted. Well, and, and this is uh, mentionable just because last year we were talking about Japan getting 60. They had an event last year over there where they got 60 inches of snow in like a day. So this is two years in a row that this region that doesn't normally see, um, that doesn't normally see uh, this kind of snow two years in a row, they see it. So um, impressive stuff there. Like I said, check it out later. Mari has released a little video on it. And then, you know... 
Myanmar has had it pretty bad this year. Um, a lot of uh, a lot of a lot of what would we call it? erosion, flooding over there has changed the landscape over there. A lot of historic, um, religious, uh, iconic statues and buildings have become uh, damaged because of these events. And here we had a strong shallow earthquake. It was a 6.0. It hit around 1826 UTC time. It was 6.2 miles deep, so not very deep at all, very shallow. At least three moderately strong aftershocks in the same area in the next 30 minutes, which were about uh, 5.3. Here's a little map showing where exactly the earthquakes happened. Uh, no reports of any fatalities or economic losses. There's a low likelihood of casualties and damage, so uh, this obviously was in a remote area, um, but still, keeping our eyes on that, a 6.0, we had a, what was it, a 7.6 last night? It was originally clocked in it. I, it I, came I, at 8.1, I think. I read reports that some of these uh, readings came in as 8.6, as high as wow. that, um, and it got downgraded, so... Well, yeah, that and, was the Honduras uh, quake. That's right, that's right. And, th and thankfully that was, you know, pretty far away from the shore, so it was out in the water, but, you know, still, you have there to There was a tsunami right. warning, and that got canceled. Quickly There's canceled. There's people in Jamaica, Puerto Rico, surrounding areas all worried about that, but everything got canceled as far as tsunami warnings. Yep. Here's uh, more earthquake news, Iraq and Iran. This is the same area that had that devastating 7.3 earthquake not too long ago. And I thought this was significant to kind of show that it's once again active. 5.5, uh, 5.5, 5.3, 5.2, 5.4, 4.3, 5.0, 5.4, and a 3.7. And they all had shallow depths of 10 kilometers or 6.2 miles. So here we have earthquake activity in not exactly the same region, but exactly the same depth. I wonder how accurate this report is. That makes me kind of raise my eyebrows to see that all of these earthquakes were at a 6.2 mile depth, the same as the Myanmar one as well. So oh, we can look into it. Yeah, that's it's something definitely to look. If anybody earthquake. has any idea what that has to do with, uh, feel free to leave us a comment, give us an explanation, because uh, that's very. Uh, the other one was very devastating. Um, the one that they had in November. Yes. I remember the seven three reports of that. So here we got some a little bit of uh, volcano news. Two volcanoes between January and 3rd and the 9th became active. Now, the one that sticks out the most is this uh, Katavar here in Papua New Guinea. And I, I read first that it was the 17th century, it was the last time it went off. But this here is stating that the first confirmed historical eruption. So to me... I'd have to look in to see how long this uh, volcano has been where it's been. You would think they would have put that here in this article as I'm browsing through it really fast. But uh, very, very shocking news to hear uh, such a claim that this is the first time that this volcano has uh, had any activity. So very, very, very concerning there. And again, that's something else we'll look into. We'll find out how long this volcano has been around. I mean, obviously it's been around a really long time, but uh, you know, there's always, there's always an age on something. So something else just to look into. And again, folks, if you haven't yet, go to the grandsolarminimum.com. It's still under construction right now, but we are adding things to it daily. Uh, we have a forum. It's in the join the discussion area. You click on that and it will take you to our forum, which is easy. You register, you're online, you're a member. Uh, you get all access to everything here, the solar weather, the researcher's corner. It's where we invite people to share their graphs, their charts, uh, ideas, thoughts, suggestions. It's all here. And the whole purpose of this website is to help people collaborate and bounce ideas off of each other. And also there's areas in here about prepping and homesteading so you know it's it's kind of like a community where you can come together and teach each other hey how would you suggest to keep warm up here in massachusetts and you know just things like that it's good to know um there's a lot of people out there that have experience with this kind of stuff so um always eager to get the expert's opinion uh you could always look up a video online but 
uh, looking up videos and then talking to someone who's actually done it on a regular basis is a whole different story. All right, that's going to do it for us tonight. Mari, thanks for your assistance as always. Hey, you know. <laughs> All right, guys, hope you got something out of this show, and we'll talk soon.